Terrapagos plus Comfey won a Regulation G tournament, and there was also other Pokemon in this top cut, like Iron Boulder, there was a Lunala that ended up finishing 4th, and we also saw the return of Serena within top 8. So the first place team ended up using Terrapagos plus Comfey. Essentially, the goal of this particular team is that you have this Terrapagos that's able to set up the Calm Mind, but it actually has Covert Cloak here. So Covert Cloak gives you the immunity to opposing Snarl, and it also gives you the immunity to opposing Fake Out. This allows you to set up the Calm Mind a lot more effectively. This Terrapagos still opted for Protect for that overall consistency. You have Comfey, which gives you incredible support. You have Floral Healing to heal up the Terrapagos back into its uh, original ability. You have Trick Room to allow it to sweep under Trick Room, and then Draining Kiss in general, which is good into Urshifu Rapid Strike and good into Urshifu Single Strike. So this Comfey, especially with Agua Fairy, it's hard to get off the field. It's the ultimate support Pokemon for Tropagos, and it allows Tropagos to shine really, really well. Then you have Incineroar here with Citrus Berry. You don't need safety goggles in this particular format at the moment because Amoongus isn't too popular. Because the thing about this like team in general is that you can have Rillaboom plus Ogre Pond as a way of beating other Amoongus, but the issue is, is that both these Pokemon still lose to Amoongus Sludge Bomb, so you would need Goggles Instant to help versus that, but since the Pokemon isn't that popular, I think Citrus makes a lot more sense. It's definitely more of a greedy item, but yeah, I, I most, at least in my opinion, I think Citrus is way better than uh goggles. Then you have Urshifu here, you already have double fake out and redirection, and this team doesn't really have ways of doing like immediate crazy damage, so I assume that you can just, you know, cycle the fake out redirections and spam Terra Dark Wicked Blow, and that really gives you good flexibility. If you're going up against other Tailwind teams, you can definitely get up Trick Room, and then immediately run through them once they set up Tailwind with Terra Dark Wicked Blow. It's also good into uh, Calyrex Ghost, so you not only have Tropagos to beat Calyrex Ghost, but you also have Urshifu plus uh, like Rillaboom, which definitely Definitely with uh, Soccer Punch can beat it. So yeah, that's kind of the uh, theory behind our Shifu, I assume. But the team is really good. I think this is the best Tropico set for sure, though. Like the Cover Cloak one is by far the most consistent one. I might even make a video featuring this Pokemon because I think this this particular set is so good. Like this is definitely how I would play it. Because the Leftovers one gets kind of worn down by like, like you know like Snarl. This one can't. And also the other one kind of loses to Fake Out plus you know strong attacks. This also does not lose to that. Like this allows Tropicos to really shine and. Yeah, Tropicos plus Kumpe. It seems to be a top meta threat. Now, I want to see what he ended up losing to. Okay, it just seemed to be around one loss. This may have just been off of play and just like because the team, his opponent's team was very aggressive. But if you look at everything else, it was just wins, wins, wins. So it goes to show that the stuff was actually really consistent and worth considering in the future. So there's that. Then their second place team used Calyrex Ghost. So this goes to show that Calyrex Ghost did actually get beat in uh, finals. So Cal this this one ended up having a Whimsicott with Covered Cloak. Uh, you get access to Encore, which can lock up board positions that expect you that go for Protect. You have Imprisoned Trick room for a graph which is good into other size spam because you not only abuse their size spam by going for expanding force but you also you know just lock them out of clicking trick room and then citrus berry has the bulk to be able to take all the hits off of size spam for a graph actually makes a lot of sense with calyrex ghost because you have armor tail which blocks sucker punch and a lot of people are going to run our shifu dark anyway so you might as well have that then there's our shifu a single strike here again it does a lot of damage under tailwind helping hand is incredible support and then this calyrex ghost in particular is going for a terra normal, it pairs well with Helping Hand anyways, and you really maximize damage on your Astral Barrage. Then Rillaboom also does a lot of damage with uh, Helping Hand into High Force Power. It's able to turn off other Psychic Terrain, and more importantly, turn off Electric Terrain for this team. And then the other important thing to note is that although Furigraph's supposed to counter other Trick Room, you can just Fake Out plus Trick Room with anything, and then start sweeping with Rillaboom or Incineroar under Trick Room. So you actually do have the Tailwind into Trick Room mode. I think Imprisoned Trick Room Furigraph, at least this particular set, actually actually pretty underrated. Like, they're, like, the thing is, is that you can still play the Furigraph as a Trick Room setter, but also supplement your Tailwind in terms of beating other Trick Room, so you actually get so much flexibility out of running Imprison. I know some people are trying, like, I think Imprison as a move, like, even without Trick Room is actually, like, underlooked, because, like, what you can do is, um, so you go for your Imprison, and then you, if you have Protect, you lock your opponents out of clicking Protect. That allows you to really mess up other people's board positions and kind of just take games off of that. So there's actually, it's actually, I think, I think it's really good. 
And then, yeah, the Helping Hand on Whimsicott just adds so much to Calyrex and her Shifu. And, yeah, even in Tailwind, I assume you can just Helping Hand into Terra Fairy Gleam if you need to. But I assume that's not actually doing that much damage. This Incineroar did offer Safety Goggles. Probably good into Amoongus. I don't know how much you need to beat Amoongus in this format. But I guess for this kind of team, because you don't have a Redirection Ogre Pond, you might as well actually opt for Safety Goggles. Then I want to see the uh, matchups other than Finals that were lost. Oh, how in the world did it beat Lunala? I, I guess the Furigraph probably carried versus that, because the King Gambit would go kind of wild. Then the other losses were, um, I'm not sure exactly how, so I probably won't mention these. Yeah, th this may have been a Calyrex Ice. Oh, this is, so this is basically that Blood Moon team with a Calyrex Ice over Ogre Pond. I've actually seen some people try that too. Okay. Then there's a third place. I ended up using Maridon Bundle and Boulder. Oh, I actually really like this. So, okay, one thing that I kind of noticed, at least af after looking at this team, is that Maridon plus Gambit's actually a good combination too. Because Gambit gets access to... So basically, Maridon kind of loses to Snarl if, you're, if you play correctly. So like having King Gambit's good versus that. But also, the other thing is that Maridon turns off Psychic Train, which opens up your King Gambit to be Calyrex Ghost. So you allow yourself to use a Specs Maridon. Because Specs Maridon with Electro Drift into one target is definitely doing more damage than an Astro Barrage. So if you have stuff to beat Calyrex Ghost, like, you know, that Icy Wind support, the Trick Room Furigraph, and the King Gambit, you know, just going for a lot of powerful attacks, it actually really pairs well with Maridon. I think you do have to pair it well with stuff that beats ground types, but conveniently, one Pokemon that does beat ground types, you know, Iron Bundle, also is a perfect partner for Maridon. You know, you get that Icy Wind support, you get that Freeze Dry and Hydro Pump to hit the ground, types and then you pair that with ogre pond heart flame for redirection to really allow maridon to do what it wants the other thing that maridon kind of dislikes is you know fake out from incineroar and rillaboom so uh, heart flame beats the uh, rillaboom king gambit technically beats rillaboom but then also furigraph blocks the fake out so it actually allows maridon to consistently go for the attacks that it wants to go for and i think that's generally really good the other thing you have is iron boulder in in electric train it seems to i don't know if it gets an attack or a speed boost here i think either is really good Personally, I think speed boost is a bit better. But yeah, if you do manage to get a speed boost and you pair that with Helping Hand for a graph in the mid game, then you just clean through teams with the Mighty Cleave. And they don't want to intimidate you because you have a King Gambit. So it's actually really nice. I saw some people running Icy Wind Gambit plus Assurance. Like, no, Icy Wind Bundle plus Assurance Gambit. And the theory behind that was that Icy Wind just chipped everything and then Assurance just prevented anything from switching in. And Bundle Gambit was one of the best offensive course. And that was back in Regulation B. I think you definitely can return that here though kowtow cleave also makes a lot of sense because it's still doing consistent damage this web page is using significant that's because i'm on a macbook man <laughs> yeah but um yeah so you have uh, but i think i think this team is really nice like the uh, furigraph you know follow me into trick room sweep with gambit the defined really helps the heart flame you know you have icy wind support to not only help the uh the boulder outside of uh, you know the electric train stuff but also the maridon in electric train i think iron bundle still outspeeds boulder no it definitely does so you can't icy wind for even more speed control so this team has you know like really really ways of going first a lot of damage output ways to kind of counter intimidate and also just a good trick room mode and then helping hand to really you know tie everything together then there's my man sableye vgc uh he, I, i'm pretty sure he's been running this team for a little bit uh it's a lunala balance team he also has his own channel i assume that he went over this tournament run on his channel so i do recommend checking that out but yeah this is kind of his team so sulfus king gambit does really well under trick room terra fairy lunala is probably the best one defensively wide guard's good into Calyrex Ghost. If you do manage to get up Trick Room, then Rillaboom can sweep with Woodhammer, King Gambit can sweep with Kowtow Cleave, and Sinor can do really well, you know, knock off Flare Blitz, and also a slow, bulkier Shifu can also just surging strikes through everything. That or Shifu plus Gambit Core and Lando Eye is so good into other Incineroar, and same with Lunala, that you really mess up your opponent's positioning, because Incineroar is meant to be the best defensive Pokemon in the format, so yeah, because of that, I think, I think, uh, like, having a lot of instant counters is really good in general. But yeah, the King Gambit, you know, does well into Calyrex Ghost. If you do manage to get up Trick Room, then you just immediately beat the Calyrex Ghost with Terra Water Surging Strikes. You can opt for Terra Water on this kind of team now, because, like, you don't have to Terra versus that kind of stuff. You can just, you know, use the Lando Eye, you can use the Lunala. Like, Lando Eye in particular is so good into Raging Bolt that you can actually afford to just use our Shifu and kind of beat that Pokemon that way. But yeah, otherwise, you have, uh, you know, King Gambit here with Low Kick. So if you do manage to get the Attack Boost, you actually beat Instant. Iron Head is good at hitting, you know, Flood mean you should just be able to clear that pokemon and then sucker punch into changing trains is good at beating calyrex ghost so this is if, if there was a lunala team that i recommend picking up this is definitely the one that i would recommend picking up because the thing is is that like the, it's just so so good like you just go for um 
I, or like this this is a team that I would pick up just because I think Lunala plus King Gambit just have incredible synergy. I did try Sword Stance Gambit. I thought that was really good too with another Pokemon over Lando Eye. But yeah, this is the general core that you want to pick up. I think this is definitely the way to go if you're running Lunala. And yeah, it's just a good balanced team played well. Then I want to see the matches. I just want to see uh, So did lose to Furigraph. I assume that the Furigraph or Shifu modes kind of cause problems. Lost to Coridon. Okay, I'm kind of interested in that because that team did actually make it pretty far into the tournament. And then, um, okay, I mean, this is one of the earlier round losses, just like Groudon balance. I assume that Amoongus actually just ended up being a problem. Yeah, I guess, but like, you have so many ways to beat Amoongus. I'm not sure exactly how that was lost, but we'll see how this one was lost because this is the uh, fifth place team. So the fifth place team ended up using Assault Vest. Oh, hold up. This is actually a really cool Coridon set. So this is full support Coridon. Okay, first thing to look at, Shadow Ball on Furigraph. That's good at hitting Calyrex Ghost. I actually really like that because Hyper Voice hits everything other than that. Then you have uh, King Gambit. So I assume that because you don't want to intimidate Coridon because you have King Gambit. And then the Howl is really good support into your Assault Vest Coridon. Really good support into your King Gambit. And also the your own Amoongus gives you incredible redirection. Because Coridon now gets Flame Charge, which boosts up its speed. And then the Clear Amulet Howl is so good. You know, we talked about the Coridon plus Gouging Fire Core yesterday. And then on top of that, you know, Breaking Swipe and Snarl gives you incredible damage reduction. So you can spam Breaking Swipe and Snarl. You know, help your King Gambit Sword Stance. Help your Furigraph Trick Room. Per, that, that in particular is a Calyrex Ghost matchup. And also help your Amoongus set up Trick Room. So, and because Coridon's fast and it gets access to Flame Charge... It actually synergizes really well with all three of those Pokemon. Flutterman getting a potential speed boost is also really good. And then having double Breaking Swipe to supplement Flutterman that generally has, you know, 135 special defense stat and 55 defense. And, you know, you pair that with Redirection, it just ends up being really nice. The Helping Hand is good with Specs Flutterman. It's good with King Gambit. Especially since this King Gambit's Terra Dark, you're super maximizing on your damage. The Helping Hand is also good with Collision Course because you can spam that pretty easily. You know, if, if once the Gouging Fire gets off a of Howl, I think it's also really beneficial in terms of uh, just the, the helping hand in general. So, yeah, I think this Furigraph set's really good. I think this team actually makes a lot of sense. I, I think, like, as, as, you know, the format's developing and people are starting to figure things out. And, yeah, this particular Crydon set is a really good discovery. I actually, I actually super, super like it. I think it's good. Then we have um, this one. Ended up using, oh, okay. So, it's the uh, Blood Moon stuff. So, I mean, Clear Amulet Kali Ice is definitely the better set. So you guys might be like, why are you in the world are you running two different Trick Room Sweepers? Or three. Blood Moon is not actually a Trick Room Sweeper. I mean, most people know that. It's supposed to sweep under Tailwind. It runs max speed. And the whole theory is that you can go for Tailwind into Terra Normal Hyper Voice. And there's very few things that can handle it. So, and then you pair that with the Trick Room mode, and if your opponents are using really fast Pokemon, then Blood Moon can still sweep under Trick Room. It doesn't outspeed Pokemon like Incineroar under Trick Room, so they can definitely Parting Shot or Knock Off. That is the way to abuse that, but that's still something that's pretty worth, like, worth noting. But yeah, you have Tornadus into uh, or Shifu into Blood Moon, then you have like, so you can lead like Tornadus Blood Moon, for example, you know, Tailwind into Hyper Voice, you know, Terra Normal, start, you know, going for that over and over and over, and then once you're able to get, you know, get that going, then in the mid game, you can bring up Phragraph plus Sun. Uh, Iron Hands, just go for Fake Out into Trick Room, and then Helping Hand and Sweep with Hands. So you have that option. You can have Hands plus Calyrex, do the same thing. You know, Fake Out into Trick Room, and then Sweep with that. You can even have Furigraph plus Calyrex, Protect into Trick Room, and then Sweep with that. So there's actually a lot of options when it comes with that. This Calyrex Ice has opted for Terra Fire. It's good into a Fluttermane, which would normally go for Ghost Attacks into you. It's also good into opposing Steel types, which are generally designed to beat Calyrex, mainly, you know, stuff like Golden Go, which might end up picking up. But yeah, Urshifu is really good under Tailwind. And then you just have super good Trick Room modes in general. Like you can lead Hands plus Furigraph and then late game with, you know, Urshifu plus Tornadus. Like that's definitely another way you can go. And since Calyrex Ice is such a broken Pokemon and just, you know, get up trick room so so easily you can really use that to your advantage the taunt on tornadus and his here is very very important to amoongus if you don't have taunt on iron hands your whole team actually just loses to well played amoongus like amoongus just completely dismantles this if you don't use it properly so yeah it's actually very very important to have taunt and then terra dark on tornadus i assume this tornadus is pretty slow because if you terra dark then now uh, they can't the opposing tornadus or whimsicott can't go for like taunt or encore so it actually helps you in that kind of matchup it 
doesn't really help versus Whimsicott because they're going to read you and go for Moonblast anyways, but definitely in the Tornadus mirror it's useful because most of the Tornadus on these semi Chirp Room teams do actually run really bulky. So what you can do is uh, when the Chirp Room is about to end, you can bring in the slow Tornadus, go for that one Bleak Windstorm, and then you can follow up with Tailwind. So being slower than stuff like Urshifu Single Strike, for example, by not running any speed on Tornadus can actually really help your Chirp Room mode in the right situation. And yeah, that's kind of why uh, these Tornadus run slow and bulky. Like it's good under Chirp Room. It's solid under Trick Room and very, very, you know, good as a Tailwind Center. And it's hard to get off the field, too. That's, like, another bonus. Then there was ho So ho ended up finishing... Isn't this, like... Wait, this is actually really interesting. This is really fascinating. So you have... I think Glamour is actually a good Pokemon right now. Because there's not that many Pokemon that are able to... Like, Amoongus doesn't really exist. So if Glamour gets up Toxic Spikes, it can really cause a lot of havoc. So you have Assault Vest Rillaboom plus Ting Lu with Snarl. That is one of the best defensive cores... Like, specially defensive cores in general. You have Chen Pao plus Urshifu and Rillaboom to really power that up. But there's a Clear Amulet Ho. I think Clear Amulet Ho pairs really well with Chen pal because it's not the hardest to start getting off a bunch of sacred fires and because they can't intimidate you you're doing so much damage like ho has good attack stat and has really good bulk so you can use that recover you can use that regenerator to make ho hard to remove and then you can you know set up the toxic spikes if you play proper like you know self u turn with any of your other two pokemon and then the regenerator plus you know recover can just help you stall through but also chen pao next to ho does a lot of damage chen pao next to her, shifu does a lot of damage if you're worried about thunderclap you can just swap in Tang Lu, and you'll probably take it anyways. So Terra Water is definitely optimal there. Terra Grass is optimal because it covers for your ground and water weakness, also is solid into Amoongus. And then, yeah, Ruination is supposed to chip everything. You know, Real Fake Out is really good for this team. You have Fire, Water, Grass. I think Ho is really cool and definitely does make sense here. You can also turn off, you know, Psychic Terrain and go for Sucker Punch, turn off Psychic Terrain, you know, beat it with our Shifu, beat it with Tang Lu. Ho is able to take the hits. So I actually think this team has a solid board of matchups. Into other Amoongus, you can just go for Sacred Fire next to Chen how you should pick up the knockout so there's that option for you too or you can just go for you know glamora plus tinglu just start going for you know terra grass meteor beams and then if they want to sludge bomb the thing is is that they're not going to do as much damage because you have vessel of ruin and they also have to be worried about you protecting or swapping into rillaboom on that turn to get get around spore so there's actually a lot of options when it comes to that but yeah kind of the general take about this uh glamora stuff is i think i think the Gla i think glamora ho is actually pretty cool like that does actually make a lot of sense in a terrestrialization format because you can cover for your weaknesses so well. Uh, both of them are Terra Grass. I assume that's, you know, generally there to beat Amoongus, because, like, Regenerator is good enough, and your special bulk on Ho is so high that you're not actually that worried about Sludge Bomb, especially when you have Ting Lu. So, yeah, you can actually position it around effectively. I, I think I think Clear Amulet Ho plus Chen Pao, like, that's definitely the way to use it. Then we knew Kyogre was good. It's just, like, you know, how would you particularly use Kyogre? This one is a fascinating way of making it work. So there you have, uh, oh, so you have Glasses or Shifu. I assume this is just there to, like, maximize your damage. Scarf Ogre helping against Arena. Okay, this is definitely the way to do it. Yeah, because Scarf, uh, also Hydro Pump. Oh, I guess that's to get around Spread because you don't actually get, like, Wide Guard because you don't get Snarl. That is a really interesting move choice. But yeah, Helping Hand, Terra Water, uh, Scarf Water Spell. That should knock a lot of things out. Rillaboom should take 70% from that. That's actually a very scary combination. And then you pair that with uh, Tailwind and Raindance Tornadus. Raindance is specifically good at, you know, getting around other Groudon trying to outposition you. Because I do actually think Groudon plus Bolt actually have good ways of outpositioning you. The Triple Axel is good at hitting, you know, Dragon types, in particular Raging Bolt. The Double Glide makes a lot of sense. And then you have Double Fake Out into our Shifu. Uh, you do have Taunt on Serena, which is good into Amoongus. And then Bleak Windstorm and Rain also does a lot of damage. Damage. So this is why the Tornadus is Focus Sash. It's able to take and you know guaranteed one hit from any of these powerful Pokemon, so you don't have to EV for it. But also Tornadus like this is faster than Ogre Pond, and you can always land your Bleak Wind Storms because of the rain. So you actually get much stronger Bleak Wind Storms because you're investing max into special attack, and it becomes a lot more threatening. And the Sash gives you all the bulk that you need, and now you get all the EVs into speed to outspeed Ogre Pond Wellspring. So you can just double that up with Bleak Wind Storm into Ice Beam, and you should beat it from there. And if there if they're at like you can even go for water spout knock out their partner in Sinor, and then just follow up with a bleak one storm and you should pick up the knockout i think terra flying tornadoes with sash would also be pretty cool because you already have sarina with queenly majesty i think that's definitely something that at least i would consider because i do think like max speed uh timid terra flying bleak one storm does a lot of damage and it also beats ogre pond wellspring which is you know something you struggle against yeah then the rillaboom here i guess our shifu is also good at hitting you know it's good at hitting raging bolt or forcing it to terra and then you know rillaboom or um 
Kyogre beat it. I do like the Terrifier set. I think it's uh, it gives you a lot of good like resistances, mainly just the Fairy one, and the Tailwind, and, and it still allows you to use your Tailwind, but you don't have to Terra to get a damage boost. So like helping hand into you know Wicked Blow can definitely clean through an endgame as well, or helping hand into Sucker Punch because of that extra 20% power that you're getting. Because you already have two sleep immunities and you have helping hand and taunt, Figgy Berry Instant makes a lot of sense. It gives you a lot of extra bulk, and then knockoff is good at getting rid of items, which can definitely you know getting rid of random assault vests can really open up your ogre i think kyogre plus sarina is definitely the way to play it though and sarina will, will be included on an underrated pokemon list then we have screens plus uh, oh this is screens plus amazenta hmm how would you play screens plus amazenta okay so behemoth bash is good at clearing flutter main screens plus thunder wave is good and then you have nasty plot goldango doesn't goldango technically just hard counter amazenta oh that's actually kind of cool I mean, okay, that, that's not cool for Zamazenta, but it's cool for uh, Goldango. I guess if you're running Zamazenta, you do need something to completely deal with Goldango, like other Goldango, because that can be an issue. Like, if you force their Goldango to Terra, then Zamazenta's faster and probably beats it with Body Press, but you do have to force the Goldango to Terra in those situations. That's definitely something that's worth considering, because I do think Goldango is pretty good right now. You know, it, it was on this Top Cut team that ended up having a pretty good record as well. So yeah, you get up the screens, you have the Redirection Double Fake Out, and you just sweep with Zamazenta or Goldango. So these game plans are very very much focused on sweeping with golden goat or zamazenta which i think is absolutely fine because those pokemon are so good i think in particular like if teams aren't ready for zamazenta they definitely lose especially you know like dual screens thunder wave double fake out redirection like that's just the ultimate support for zamazenta i think like i'm curious to see what it ended up losing to oh it ended up losing to the lunala i think that makes sense just because the uh like lunala into urshifu and lando i definitely have ways of outpowering this stuff so yeah i assume that's kind of why it ended up losing you do have to be careful when you're playing stuff like this but i do think like it's a really good use of zamazenta then in a 10th place we end up seeing archaladon and araquanid okay so here you have goggles archaladon i assume that's there to be other amoongus calm mind kyogre with terra water that's a crazy amount of damage then a covered cloak thunder so you end up you know having another way of getting up brain you have speed control to allow your kyogre to go first you can self thunder wave for your trick room modes though you know you can't do that next to photograph of course and then eerie impulse to kind of mess up special attackers terra water liquidation and rain probably doesn't have many switch ins i know how like that that pokemon's damage calcs go crazy so i think that's pretty neat and then yeah fake out into trick room you have our chaladon in rain you have rain dance to really support that and then fake out into to, uh, also calm mind and then terra water origin pulse can also sweep under trick room so yeah i think this is a good use of kyogre i think calm mind kyogre is definitely underrated though because there are rain pokemon that actually pair well with kyogre or just like you know or shifu and if you have calm mind ogre you get this good setup and you also get scarf or shifu or in this case you get our chaladon or like araquanid but like yeah there's a lot of options with o calm mind ogre i think the pokemon's definitely good so yeah that's definitely something that's worth looking at too then i wanted to look at uh oh groudon's son I'm not going to look at 222 Dozo just because um, I, assume that, I assume that the player just ended up playing it well. I will be looking at the Roaring Moon stuff, though. So let's look at this. Um, so this one ended up using Swords Dance Groudon. Yeah, I assume if you do manage to get off a uh, Tailwind, then you can play into Swords Dance. Because if you manage to get off of one Swords Dance and Tailwind, you should just sweep through with Precipice Blades. And the Flying types will definitely beat to he drop to Heat Crash. Uh, Ogre Pond Heart Flame and Sun does a lot of damage. We know that. Our Shifu under Tailwind is good. And Prison Trick Room is great at beating opposing, uh, you know, opposing Trick Room. But also having your own good Trick Room mode. You know, it's something like Groudon. So you can redirect Trick Room Sweep with Groudon into Tailwind team, other Tailwind teams. And then uh, Booster Energy. Energy flutter main i assume this is special attack does a lot of damage so if you don't end up bringing the ground on on lead you can just lead tornadus plus whimsicott not tornadus a uh, whimsicott plus uh flutter main and then go for charm into a gleam and kind of play off of that so i actually think that's also really good but yeah i think the usage of like follow me into trick room follow me into sword stance get up tailwind sweep from there you know maybe protect terrifier cudgel like that i think that really adds to it and then also when you add her shifu i think there's a lot of consistency coming out of it i think super slow glasses or shifu with the trick room mode can also be another cool way to play it then i want to see the exact variant of 222 uh citrus berry helping hand so is it scarf chiyu i assume yeah it's scarf chiyu okay so citrus berry helping hand is good into scarf chiyu band uh good into this and especially terror dark sucker punch good into this with specs and then yeah you have dondozo tatsugiri yeah 222 dozo if you play it well you definitely can just take a lot of games then there's a tailwind team with our chaladon mystic water kyogre with water spout terra electric thunder with no origin pulse that's kind of interesting once you're at low health you can't even use your water move which is okay these three moves did get second at internets in the past then you have raging bolt with terra fairy 
Thunder's good. You do a lot of damage to things with Thunder. And then Thunderclap's good priority. Uh, Lando I makes sense. You beat uh, Raging Bolt and you also beat Maraidon, especially when you're under Tailwind. Archaladon's good into Ogre Pond Wellspring. And then Mystic Water or Shifu in Rain does crazy damage. And then you also have Rain Dance. And you're pairing it with that Bleak Wind Storm. So Bleak Wind Storm's doing a lot of damage because you're probably investing a lot of EVs into Special Attack. I think it's important to note that this, uh, like, Electric types can run Thunder and Rain. Like, that's something that uh, can really catch a lot of things off guard in terms of damage output. Like, that's definitely something that's worth noting. Then I wanted to look at, uh, let's look at this team. So this team ended up using uh, Roaring Moon. Okay, so I guess he set up Tailwind with Roaring Moon, and then, you know, Rayquaza can go for a Dragon Ascent. The Terra Normal E-Speed Sword Stance set next to Chen Pao. Uh, Throw Chop is good at stopping Parting Shot. I think that actually is a pretty good take, though. You know, you don't have any priority here, so you do have to be careful. Specs Golden go under Tailwind is good. Um, you know, Trick is good at messing up people's positioning, and also this is good into Amoongus, so you can actually afford to run Citrus Berry here. And then Rillaboom does well next to Chen Pao, and Sinor is good support to allow things to set up here. And then between Intimidate, Breaking Swipe, and Knockoff, you have really good utility. And then Chen Pao powering up all the physical attackers, and Golden Go being that really good Terra Steel make it rain. Yeah, I think this is a good use of Rayquaza. Rayquaza is kind of hard to position, so you do have to be careful there, but I think it definitely still made some sense. Then we're going to look at another Groudon team. So you have Sash, Icy, and Fluttermane. That should be fast. Um, Amoongus and Sinor. And Sinor, no Flare Blitz here. Because Flare Blitz does do a lot of damage in Sun. So I'm kind of curious as to why there's no Flare Blitz. Because the uh, Raging Bolt also has Snarl. Then the Raging Bolt has Snarl here. Uh, Protosynthesis, Special Attack Boost is really good. A uh, Redirection Ogre Pond is nice for this team. Because you have Sword Stance. And it pairs well with the Redirection Amoongus. So like double Redirection. And also the other cool thing is that you can Redirect into Spore. To help your Amoongus get off Spore. Like Redirect away Taunts and stuff. So like it's actually really helpful for your own Amoongus, but also again, you're getting a ton of damage in uh, Sun with uh, Groudon, so there's that. But yeah, here, I didn't say Terra type though, I'm kind of curious, it's probably Terra Fire, I'm not even going to think about it. Fire Punch over Heat Crush though, that's, that's that's definitely an interesting pick. And then yeah, Terra Fairy Moonblast, you know, lots of damage. The team, the team has a good defensive backbone that uses Sun to really accelerate the pace of the game. Then the last one here is going to be a Calyrex Ice team. Uh, boost so Assault Fist, Terra Poison, or Shifu. Really slow under Trick Room should be able to sweep there. Eerie Impulse is interesting because you do, you know, you do uh, lower people's special attack or like their Pokemon. Um, and Sinor Goggles, I think that's definitely required for this kind of team because otherwise, you know, they can just spore you under Trick Room. So you need Goggles to be able to, you know, position well into that. Boost your Energy, Raging Bolt maximizes damage. Also pairs very well with Calyrex Ice just offensively. You got that Ice Electric. Amoongus Redirection is good. Rocky Helmet's good into Urshifu. And then in your own Trick Room, you can definitely sweep with a very bulky um, Assault Fest Urshifu. So you also have that option. And then Terra Poison Poison Jab beats the Terra Fairy Pokemon. Like, it beats Terra Fairy Flutter, and then Wicked Blow beats non-Terra Fairy Flutter, like, eventually. So that's kind of the theory behind that. But yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of this video. I just wanted to go over some of the top teams in this tournament, and how Comfey won. That's crazy. Comfey won a tournament in a format full of legendaries. I think that's really cool. And yeah, we're going to see so many unique support Pokemon and all the unique paradoxes that weren't used before get usage here because this format really promotes that. The unique support Pokemon is pairs really well with single restricted because it just it just allows you to bring the maximum potential out of them, which is why we've seen Pokemon like Serena and Comfey do well here. And then the uh, the Protosynthesis and Quark Drag Pokemon, I mean, that's self-explanatory. Like, uh, Crydon and Maridon and Groudon are just generally solid Pokemon. I would say Crydon's definitely one of the wor like worst ones. Like it's definitely worse than Groudon, but I think people will figure out how to use it. But yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of uh, this video. I just wanted to go with some of the top teams. I thought it was really cool. And yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching.